It's fantastic to welcome Mary Wilcox from Clara Reed this evening. Although we never endorse products at the BDA, it's always great to have the experts with us and to listen to the software uh, that's available for us all to benefit from. And uh, Mary has let me know that the team at Claro have just released their newest version of Claro Read, which I know Mary is going to showcase this evening, which will be fantastic. And also um, the team at Claro are very kindly going to share a discount code as well too. So more from that about that from Mary later. So without further delay, I'm now going to hand over to Mary for tonight's session. Good evening, Mary. Hello, good evening. Um, you'll see me in a moment. Hello. Um, thanks everyone for joining me. I'll, um, I'm going to explain everything there is to know about Clara Reed and how easy it is to use and of course the new features um, that we've just released. So without further ado, I'll get on with explaining how to use our software. So, So this is a toolbar. Um, we have three different versions of Clara Read. Um, Clara Read SE, uh, which is a very cut down version. People like to use it in exams. There's no spell checker on or anything. Um, and then we have Clara Read Plus and Clara Read Pro. They're very similar. Um, Pro has a few scanning features that Plus doesn't. And that's really the differences. Um, and you get our apps free. Um, with Clarity Plus and Pro, which is really great as well. And if I've got time today, I'll show you um, the apps as well. So I will um, open a Word document and open the software and show you how easy it is to use. So this is a little icon. These are the different versions. This is Clarity SE. That's plus, and this is pro. I'm going to use pro this evening. It's just opening up, and it will read text on any document, not just Word. It reads PDFs, it reads on the internet, it even reads on a photograph uh, if you've got it. Um, a piece of paper with writing on, you can scan that in and have that read aloud to you as well. It takes away the stress of having to read the words and you can concentrate on the content instead of stumbling through the words. Um, so it's such a help, relieves the stress of uh, having to read and write, of course. So all you have to do is click where you'd like to start reading from. So I'll start here and press play. So as you can see, it's highlighting the words as it's being read. Um, you can change the highlighting colour, change what it's highlighting and change the voice. We've got lots of voices to choose from um, and 30 different languages. So you just go into settings to change the voice. And we're using Daniel at the moment. Um, we use the highest quality voices available. And there's, a, I think, 100 voices to choose from. We've got different accents, um, like we've got uh, Oliver. He's um, Scottish. This is a test of the current voice. And we've got, um, who else have we got? Uh, you see, we've got, I've got lots of lots of voices on here. That's because this is a demonstration laptop. We don't suggest that you download every single voice. Just download maybe five, um, because it uses quite a lot of memory on your computer. Um, so who shall I show you? Um, shall I show you? What oh, Tom? Tom's American. Let me see Tom. It's Tom. We've got male and female. We also have children's voices as well. Um, so that's really great if, if the child's using uh, the software. This is where you speed it up, slow it down, depending on what you're reading. If you're proofreading, you might want it quite slow at reading. If you've got a big document to have read aloud to you, you might want it a bit quicker. Um, now, um, if you remember, 
It was highlighting in blue a word at a time. It's an advanced speech, this way change, how it's highlighting. So here, look, we're highlighting a word at a time. You can have no highlighting, word trail, which I'll show you in a moment, and sentence and paragraph. And you, this is where you change what colour it changes to as it says the words. So the foreground, the text, you can choose any colour you like, you can even choose a specific colour by clicking here. And I'll, I'll choose this dark blue there. And then the background, you have these choices. So I'll have yellow. Um, now if I click OK. Oh, did I change it? So it, it highlights all the words in the sentence and then they all go. Okay. I prefer Daniel's voice, I'm going to change it back to Daniel. Speech option. Um, so that is where you decide what it's going to read to you. Um, so Daniel's back on. So this side, it's when it will read it to you. I've got speak when mouse selects ticked. So if I select any words with my mouse, it instantly reads that to me. I don't have to press play. Um, and then this bit here, this is as you're typing. So as you type, if you've got words uh, ticked, every time you press the space bar, it will read that word out to you. And with sentences, when you press full stop and space bar, it reads that whole sentence back to you, which is a really handy feature to make sure that you're typing what, you're, what you mean to type rather than what you think you're typing. It's really handy um, with that. So I'll click OK. So I'll show you the highlight with mouse. So I, I only want that read out. And it reads just that. And it's stopped now. Whereas if I put my cursor in text and press play, it will read and read and read until I tell it to stop. So that's how easy it is to have your work read aloud or any document. But I've only shown you in Word at the moment. Um, I will show you how uh, it will read in a in a PDF. So it works just the same. I'm opening the document here, um, PDF document. It is actually an accessible PDF document. I can put my cursor on and, um, and have it read aloud. So if I click here um, and press play, it will read just because to wake up a little bit. So it highlights the words just as it was in Word. But as I said, this is an accessible PDF. Sometimes you might have what you call an inaccessible PDF. Maybe you've scanned a, a page of a book into the computer and it's a PDF file, but that's a picture with writing on. So the computer can't read the words. It's okay because you can use this scanning button here. Actually, you've got two options. With our new version of CryoRead, we've got another option. I'll show you that after, after this scanning option. So all you do is you click scan, scan from, from PDF, and then it will ask, where do I want to, um, where is my document? Expanded. This, this is a scanned article from the magazine. It's not a JPEG file. So that will have writing on, but I won't be able to put my cursor on. So it's having a look at the document, finding all the words. It will show me the order it's going to read in because there's columns in this document. If that's wrong, these are the tools that you can change. You can take away bits of the text, um, change the order it's going to read. Um, 
it might be useful sometimes um, you can cut out that bit of the um, scanning process if it's not useful that's just in the settings um, and then you can I'll move this out of the way, send it to word that's if you want to edit it or you can save it as a PDF which is what I'm going to do and the document looks the same but this time you can put your cursor on and you can have it read aloud it wants to know where to save it, so I'll save it on my pen drive. I'll call it that. Save it. And I'll just find it. Right, so I'm going to open the document now. And it's been scanned in. I'll just zoom because the writing is a little bit small. And just place your cursor on and press play. Sugars with vision impairments. The use of PMOB stickers can be important. So now it's reading it, so you don't have to. It's really great. I'll show you what that that document looked like before. This is what it looked like before. It was just a scanned magazine article with a picture. And of course, I can't put my cursor on. Another way you can have um, text aloud, read aloud um, on something you can't put your cursor on is you can use the scan from screen function, which is here. To zoom in a bit, text is a bit small. Oh, it doesn't want to. Let's go here. Scan from screen. Now this text is tiny, it might not work. Let's see. Oh, it's not behaving itself. Let's find a different document. Uh, we have um, a book extract. This will probably be more successful. I just needed to get the text a bit bigger um, for it to be able to see it. Yeah. So there it is, it's reading what's on the screen. Um, it has actually copied that text onto the clipboard, so you can paste that into Word and then have it highlighted uh, as it's reading, which is uh, useful fiction. I was also going to show you our new function. So instead of using this scan here, scan from PDF, we have a brand new feature on our Clara Read um, software, and it's in extras. It's called Auto Converter. So you click on that, and it asks you to choose a folder. Um, I've already created mine. I've made a folder called Auto Converter on the desktop. And this is used for if you've got an inaccessible document, you can just drop it into that folder and it will convert it into a PDF file that can be read, or a Word document, or plain text, or all three. So I'll say, yes, I just want it to convert it into the PDF and the Word document. Click OK. Tell me it's going to work in the background there. So just close these. To the desktop. So here we have the auto converter folder, and here I have an inaccessible PDF file. It's another magazine article. I can just drag it into there, and now it is automatically converting it into the PDF document and the Word document. So that's really easy, and um, not so many clicks. It's step zero of two at the moment, it's just doing it in the background. It's two because there's two different um, documents it's making, it's converting into a Word and a PDF document. So one. So of course you can be just getting on doing other things while it's converting. Um, so it's done that, it's in here now. 
Um, onto my other screen. I'll just put it onto here. Here we are. <laughs> um, so now we have the original document there, the accessible PDF, and the Word document. So I'll open the Word document. And here it is. And you can edit that and you can have it read aloud. Um, so that's really easy. So, next thing, I'll show you how it can read PDFs, even in accessible PDFs, and it can read Word, it can read emails as well, anything online, and I'll show you our Chrome extension in a while. Um, we also have a dyslexic friendly spell checker. Um, and often dyslexic spelling is really tricky for Microsoft Word to actually suggest the correct word. Um, it is getting better, um, but our spell checker looks for dyslexic style spelling mistakes and, um, and is quite accurate at suggesting the correct word. All you have to do to use the spell checker is uh, put your cursor in the word and click on check. Oh, it's having to think it's doing something else there. Oh, it's got this one. have to close and open again. It's been busy doing lots of things, I think. <laughs> right, I will just close it and open it again. Okay, right, let's open this again. So it's a very, very visual spell checker. Um, where possible, it will show you a picture of uh, the word and it's got definitions and you can hover over the definitions and they will be read aloud. The suggested words will um, be read aloud as well. So let's go into the spell checker now. Here we are. So for teacher, it's got a picture. To find them features, we've got a picture as well. Go over to the definition. And the synonyms, words that mean sim in a similar, have a similar meaning to, um, to that word. So that's really great. So that's the spell checker. We also have a um, homophone identifier. Uh, so homophones are words that sound the same but are spelled differently. Um, and so when you click on that, it will show you the homophones. In this sentence. I have them highlighted in pink. You can change that in the settings, what colour they're highlighted. But there we have there. But I'm not sure whether that's the correct there um, because there's three different spellings. So I go into the spell checker and here we've got a picture as well to go with it. So do I mean there as in it's over there, there as in it belongs to them or there as in contraction of they are and then you can choose which one we meant. I meant there as in they are there. And then I can change it. And place. And there they are. So um, that's the super feature as well. Um, and we have this button here, predict. So we've got spell checker, homophone identify, and we've got word prediction. So if I click word prediction. A box will appear. I can't see it. Though. It's going to go into settings. The prediction tabs here. This is where you change the settings. It's using prediction, the style, how many letters it will predict after, how many words it will suggest, 
how short the word can be. Um, and I've chosen a green background. When you first start open the software and start using it, it's got a white background, but I lose it on the screen if it's white. So I've changed mine to green, but you can choose. But it's not showing me it at the moment for some reason. So let's switch it off and back on again. No, I don't know why it is not. Oh, here it is. It's woken up just as I started typing. So you can either use the function keys um, or you can just click on the word you meant. Um, and then as you type, it will suggest and it learns which words you use frequently as well. So that's um, the prediction. To switch it off, you press the prediction button. Um, another great help for when you are typing and writing something is our new feature, the dictate button here. This is on Cairo Read version 8, which has only just been released. Um, this is a shortcut for Dragon. Um, Dragon is speech to text software. If you've got Dragon on your computer, that is a shortcut for using it. So you don't have to open both pieces of software. Um, it will it will be there. So you just click <laughs> click on dictate. There's a red dot now, so it is listening to my voice and it will be typing what I'm saying. Full stop. You can just speak normally, you don't have to speak slowly. And it uses all the functions of Dragon without having to open it separately. Full stop. New line. Scratch that. Go to sleep. So you can put it to sleep. There's a pause button there. So it's not totally switched off. It's just gone to sleep. And then you can say, wake up. Wake up. And it's back on again. And it will be typing what I'm saying. Full stop. Go to sleep. So that uses um, the dictate functions in Dragon. It doesn't use the other functions like opening and closing programs and things. It just uses the dictate bit. And if you've got a Mac, um, it will use the speech to text software in your Mac. If you've got a Chromebook, it will use the software in there. It's just um, PCs that you have to have Dragon on uh, to use that, that feature. It won't work, it will just be greyed out if you're not in Word or somewhere that you can type into, um, or if you haven't got Dragon on your machine. Um, so that's a really great new feature in Clara Read 8, just like the, um, the auto converter. That's a new function. And there's another edition, the Claro PDF. Claro PDF is an app that we have uh, for iOS and for Android. Um, we've now made it available for PC and for Mac. Um, it's a PDF reader. It will read PDFs. Um, so you can open a PDF file and press play and it will read to you. Um, so I will find a PDF document, you just click and press play here. It <laughs> just does the same, it highlights and, um, and reads aloud. You can change the voice on it and the stickers it reads. Um, so, so that's a great feature and in the future um, version, not yet, but very soon, we'll be releasing uh, Claro PDF this one that I'm showing you, which is not available yet, but very soon. Um, it's got this button, which is so, so useful. You can type onto the document. That's really, really useful if you've got a form to fill in or if you're doing an exam and you can fill in the exam paper with your answers and then save it. So really, really handy indeed. 
you type. And then, of course, you can have that read back to you, the words. So, so that's really great. Right, so I talked about the spell checker uh, prediction and the homophones. This, uh, the font and spacing, that is, um, it, you can change the font of your whole document if you want. If you wanted it in comic sounds, you can just do that. Uh, I know you can change it in Word, but it's just it's an extra feature. And also, this is a spacing feature. You can make the line spacing bigger to make it easier to read or work. This button here is for saving your document as an audio file or a video file. Um, this is really handy if it's a big document, lots of writing, and you want to listen to it, but you don't want to sit in front of your computer to listen to it. Maybe you want to be driving and listening or on the train or walking. You can save it here. Uh, you can save a Word document, you can save a PDF document. Um, just ask what, what do you want to call it. Uh, these are the types of files you can save it as. And then you can listen to the document without having to um, sit at a computer. And the um, save as video, that looks like, um, I'll show you. Um, it's this. So you choose uh, the background color. So you choose the color, background color, choose the voice, the speed of the voice, uh, and the size of the of the text. And so it reads um, and scrolls through the screens. And that's the saving as a video. So that's that. Now, let's see if I follow what I was going to, I was intending to talk about. So I've talked about reading um, text aloud. Uh, oh, I haven't shown you how to customise the way the toolbar looks. You don't have to have all these buttons on your toolbar. and You don't have to have it that size. And there are three styles to choose from. And that's all found here in the settings button. I've got large, a large toolbar, a medium toolbar, like that. Or you can have a small toolbar. And if you don't want the captions on, you can take those away. That makes it really tiny. Um, let's make it large again. And here, these are all the buttons you can have on. And if you don't want some of them, you can just click on them. And now when I click OK, oh, they're not there anymore. So I'll just go back in there, add those back on. And just show you what it looks like in a different style. So, so this is an, a different style. And then there's this one as well. So there are the three styles um, that you can choose from. Let's go back to that one. This one, lock toolbar to active window. That puts the toolbar automatically at the top of whatever window you're using at the time. Some people like that. Some people prefer to have um, a floating to toolbar like I'm using, and then you can just move it around. Or if you take it right to the top of the screen, it docks to the top of the screen, and goes right the way across. Uh, and to undock it, you just click undock and it moves, it moves back. So that's what you can do with the, um, the toolbar. You can just make it just the way you want it to be. Um, small, big, lots of buttons, not many buttons. Okay, so I've shown you how to, um, it reads PDFs and inaccessible PDFs and reading from the screen. I haven't shown you how to use a screen roller. So I'll, um, I'll bring up a... my folder. I'll bring up that word um, document again. Um, the screen roller is in extras and it tints the screen a different colour. You can have a full overlay 
and you can choose any colour you want. You can even do it like an exact colour. If there's a particular colour that is really useful for you and it stops the words jumping about and makes the text much clearer, you can choose that colour. What I'm going to yellow. Yellow is quite quite a useful colour, I find. Lots of people like a bit of a yellow tint to the screen. So click on that. I can change how I take it. Is. And then when I click the tick, it's there and it's on whatever screen I'm on, when I'm on the internet, when I'm on PDF, the desktop, it's always got that overlay on. And if you want to switch it off or change it, you go down to the bottom. You can't see, I'm not, I've got two screens here and you can't see my the other screen, which is not very useful. Let's, here we are. Now you can. So it's this circle here. Click on that and then you've got the menu back on. You could have an underline. Now, I, I'm not dyslexic, but I like to use this um, underlining tool. Um, it helps me follow the text, um, especially if the lines are quite close together and the text is very small. It really helps me follow the text. So that's the um, underlining tool. Um, again, you can have shading above and below in whatever colour you like and how opaque you like it. And we also have a ruler, which um, really helps focus on one line at a time. You can change the size of the window and you can change the colour inside and out and you can have shading above or below or no shading at all like that. and if you don't want it on click on the cross and it switches it off so that is the screen ruler how are we doing it two minutes past eight right let's carry on with uh, some other things the chrome extension right let's go on to the internet because i haven't shown you Oh, yeah, this is good. Um, I haven't shown you using our software on the internet. So here is Chrome. Um, we do have a Chrome extension. And that's what this little star icon here is. It's the Chrome extension. I'm going to close Clarity Pro because it doesn't like having both open. In fact, if I click on here, it will moan at me and give me a message that you should be using this toolbar. It's not giving me a message, uh, but it doesn't like it. So I'll just close that and I'm going to go on history and see if I can open. Because it closed all my windows, unfortunately. Um, I did have it all ready to show, and there we are, it's not there. Mm -hmm. Recently closed. No, didn't want to. So it reads, um, it reads on in the browser within the browser using this and it's really really similar to the Clara Read toolbar as you can see it's got the scan from the screen it's got the dictate button spell checker and homophone identifier here you can tint the screen a different color here um, and some of those functions are available for free you just go to the Chrome store download the extension but if you've got a license key or Clara Read, you can get the premium version, which has all these functions. You don't, you get the spell checker and the scan from screen and the dictate button, um, which you wouldn't get if you uh, didn't have the premium version. Um, so, so here we have um, a Word document. Um, I did, I was in Dropbox and I've got this Word document and it reads um, the text aloud if it's going to behave itself. <laughs> I did already. It's not, it's not what to do. Okay. I will go on instead a website to show you. 
I've got some news article here. Here we are, all about dyslexia. Hi. Click. And it actually, well, even when you click just on one word, it will highlight that whole word, but it will read the whole of the article, unless you highlight just a bit of the text. And then it will. So you do have a choice of voices within the version, but not as many as in Clara Reed. Um, it, it all depends on uh, where, what, which machine you're on and whether you've paid for uh, the Chrome extension through the Chrome store or whether it's because you've got uh, a Clara Reed license. Um, if you want more information about the Chrome extension or anything that I've talked about today, I do monthly webinars and they're recorded and they're available to watch on our website and on our YouTube channel. So if you think, oh, I want to know a bit more about that, um, uh, that's where you should go. Go onto our website or YouTube channel and you'll be able to see a bit more information um, there. So that's the Chrome extension. Um, so uh, that's really easy to use too. Um, it's a new feature, of course, the, uh, the dictate button on the Chrome extension, and also we didn't have spell checker on there uh, until a few months ago, so that's a new feature too. Let's go back to the PowerPoint and let's have a look um, whether I've missed anything else out. So, oh, we'll take a look at the apps. So, um, to make things easy, I did recordings of the apps on my iPad so that I don't have to try and link up another screen uh, for you. Um, so we have ScanPen, which is like our magical app. Um, when you open it, I'll just press play. When you open ScanPen, it's a camera. You take a picture of some text you would like to have read aloud to you. You use your finger. <laughs> And you use your finger to highlight the words and it reads it out to you. Um, and you can take pictures of lots of different um, pieces of paper. I've done that there. And then, uh, and then it will read it to you. And you can paste that text into uh, another document and you can save it. Uh, it's really quick, really quick to use, really easy to use as well. So um, that's Claro Scan Pen. Um, you get these apps, by the way, if you've got a, a license for Claro Read, um, you get them for free. And there's information on our website how you get the apps, how you download them, um, and you get the paid for versions. We do have free versions as well. Uh, they don't have as many features on both. And all Android apps are free as well. Um, so this is Paris Speak, that's this one. I'll press play and explain how it works. So it's a box, when you open it, it's a box you can type into and have that read back to you. There's word prediction and spell check, and you can change the voice. But if you've started working on a document and you want to carry on on your <coughs> iPad, you can open it like I have there. <laughs> So I can have it read aloud to me. I press the play button up here. Um, it will read it to me and change the color of the text. And then I can edit it. And then I can save it. Um, I can also annotate it. So, uh, so that's Claro Scan Pen. And then we have Claro PDF. Claro PDF is just like I showed you earlier, uh, the PC version. Um, really easy to use, just upload from Dropbox, from Google Drive, uh, from an email, upload your uh, PDF or even take a photograph or something with text on 
and then you can have it converted into an accessible PDF within Caro PDF and then have it read out to you and you can annotate it with lines and pictures and arrows and text, type text in and then save it. So that's really handy too. So that's Claro PDF. Right, um, so that's the whistle stop tour of Claro Read. We do have extra study tools um, like mind mapping tool and Claro Capture, which automatically references things that you, uh, information you get from different documents in the internet. Um, if you want to know more about those features, you can have a look on our website. But because um, we're running out of time, I'll move on to just telling you about the prices. Um, like I said, um, Donna said earlier, um, we are offering a 10% discount um, on these prices. So Clara Read SE, uh, like I said earlier, that's the very basic version. People use it in exams. It has no extra features. It reads text aloud to you. Then we've got Clara Read Plus and Pro. So these are the prices. Um, there's no VAT added on, so you need to add VAT onto these prices. Uh, you can get a 10% discount with, I thought I had it on my PowerPoint, but it's not there. It is um, Web 19A. Let me, I need to write that down somewhere for you. I will, I'll write it um, at the end of this session. So it's Web 19A and to buy our software, you go to our website, this website here, clarosoftware.com. And take me some time. <laughs> and so then you go to buy now. And then you choose what, which product you would like, and then you can put in the code web 19 um, into there. And when you receive your email um, with your license key, you'll also um, have information about how you can download the software. And it is by creating an account. All you have to do is put in your email address and create a password, and then you can put your license key into there, into your account. There's more information on our website about that as well. So, so that's that's it. Uh, I think I've timed it very well. It's 13 minutes past eight and I aim to finish at quarter past. So um, if you'd like more information, um, please email um, us, support at clarosoftware.com. If you've already got the software and you need a bit of help uh, with using it, or marketing at clarosoftware.com and that's where you can contact me or my colleagues and we will help you with um, with any more information, uh, any questions you have. Um, thanks so much for listening. Um, you can join me on my webinars. Um, if, you, uh, if you look at our website, there's information about our webinars there and also events that I'm attending. I go to lots of events all over the country uh, and in other countries sometimes too. So uh, you can find out about those and you can meet me in person and ask me questions if you want. So that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mary. That was brilliant. Um, and we've got, you've, you've asked for questions and we've got lots of questions, Mary. So we'll try yes. and get through as many as oh, we God. can. Um, <laughs> OK, so let's get started. Okay. Uh, you've just been talking about the price. And thanks again for that discount code. That's very generous of you guys. But Kate's asking in oh, terms yes, of paying. Oh, yes, please do. But we will pop it in an email to everyone yes. when we share the recording as well. So people won't miss out. Um, but Kate's asking, sure. you were just talking about the price structure. Is that a one off payment or is it an annual fee? How does it work, Mary, in terms of the payments? Good question. I forgot to tell you about that. Um, that is a one-off payment. You have the software forever. Um, and it is actually two activations. So you can put it on two computers or you can put them on pen drives. Uh, there's information in the email explaining how you do that. And it's also on our website. So you can put them on pen drives or on two machines. And it's forever. 
Brilliant, that's fantastic. Um, we've got a couple of questions about compatibility. So, uh, and Mac right. books and Mac seem to be getting mentioned a lot here. So, um, can all versions of Claro Read be used for Mac? So, is is uh, I know you've mentioned iPads. Are we okay on Mac books and things like that as well? You can. Um, you can't use Claro Read Pro. Um, the difference between Claro Read Plus and Pro are extra scanning features, and on Macs, uh, that isn't possible, that those scanning features are possible. So um, you can only buy Plus for Mac or SE, but not Pro. Okay, and another compatibility okay. question. If Claro Read software, is Claro Read software only compatible with certain systems, e.g. Windows 10, Windows 7, etc.? It, it's compatible with everything as far as I know. Um, I know we can't use the apps on, on a Kindle, um, but, but no, it, it's, it's compatible um, with with everything it's not doesn't work very well on edge um because edge is a, a bit different apparently to um windows 10 and things so uh but yes it's pretty much anything but you could contact support if you were unsure and um, they would have a definite answer yes i was just going to say mary for anybody were um they want even more guidance those emails are probably a good place to go i guess aren't they yes yeah perfect. they are they are Great stuff. OK, well, we've got a question here from Sally um, and it's, I'll do my best hopefully to paraphrase it. She says, I've got a problem with my Claro Read Plus in that when I open a document up fully on the screen, the toolbar for Claro Read disappears. So you can only use uh, when document is not fully open. This impacts when I want to use the coloured ruler to read as I can't use it, um, as I can't control it. How can I use Claro Read with my document fully open? And then she says as an added bit that she's on a MacBook. So thanks for that, Sally. Can you give any guidance on that, Mary? Or is Sally better to go to one of your colleagues that, in the technical support? Yes, I think it's, better, it's a technical support question, that, Sally. Um, I don't want to say something and then be wrong. Um, and they, they're very quick at responding. Um, they might ask you to take a screenshot maybe of, um, of the problem if you can, or, um, or they can give you a call and, and talk you through uh, what might be the problem. Great, okay. And Sally's saying thank you so much and she'll do that. So please do, Sally. And I, I guess yeah. you know you can come back to, to you guys again if, if she needs further guidance. Um, yeah, we've, got, yeah, we've got Christina. So good evening, Christina. She's saying, could um, the, the, all the packages be used with other languages apart from English? For example, can the dictation work with any other languages, Mary? Yeah, yes, yes, you can. Um, it can be used with lots of languages and Clara Read, we have 30 different languages available. Um, and there is, um, and I'm going to, I'm going to do a webinar quite soon on um, a language translating tool that we've got, um, which can translate uh, a document um, into another language. And so, um, so if you've got a French document, you can highlight some of the words and then a box will pop up with it in English and then you can move your cursor and it will read in English and it will read in, in French. So that's really good. Fantastic. Christina is saying thank you, Mary. And Christina, the, the webinar that Mary's talking about, hosted by Clara, could be a, a good session for you there. Um, we've yes. got Mark. Mark yeah. saying, is the, oh, hang on a minute. It's just jumped. Right, I've got it again. Is the Dragon speech on all versions from standard to pro? And do I have to load Dragon software to use it? Yes, you do have to have Dragon on your machine because it is just a shortcut it isn't actually the software that you're clicking on on the toolbar um, it's only available on plus and pro and not the se version okay uh, and again mary i think if mark's got more questions about that it's probably best to go to technical su support i suspect yeah. um yeah. we've got another yeah. question yeah. 
fantastic. We've got another question about um, price instructor from Sue. And um, the prices that you've talked about tonight, Mary, are they? I, she guesses they're reflecting single users. Is there a price for a school or a multiple user license in some way? Yes, there is. If you go to our website, um, the prices are there. Um, you can choose a perpetual one-off payment, uh, school license, college license or university. Um, and that is dependent on what, whether you are a school, college or university, not how many students there are. And you can opt for an annual site license if you prefer. Uh, and that's like a bundle. It um, covers Mac, PC and Chrome extension um, and the apps. Um, and you get upgrades each year. Fantastic. Um, now, Mary, we've got a question which I think may have come through during your session, but I'm going to I'm going to share it anyway. Hopefully, it'll make sense. Um, Nicholas asking, does the facilities work with just Word documents? So I'm thinking, actually, as you went on and showed us different ways that you were working. Hopefully, Nicola, your question was answered. That it, it's not just Word documents, is it, Mary? No, it's absolutely any text on the screen or even off the screen, um, it will read. So because you've got the scanning function, so you can do the scan from screen, you can use this Chrome extension, you can use the, the play button in the toolbar, um, you can use scan pen on your on your phone um, to have it read aloud. So it will read any text. Fantastic. Um, in terms of updates as well, Mary, when uh, you guys update a package, what happens if somebody's bought a different version? Is there an automatic update, Trish is asking, or does she have to go back and buy again the newer version? Um, if you've got an individual license, it, it's an automatic update. If you have a site license, you have to um, you contact us and we'll talk about a price to upgrade. Fantastic. Um, Georgine is asking, is there a demo or trial license people can use to see if the functions are going to be useful for them? Yes, yes. If you go to our website and you go on products, uh, there's a button there uh, for a 15 day um, free trial. And if you are a school or college or university and you'd like a trial of a site license, uh, just to see how it works within a network, you can contact um, contact us and we can uh, arrange that for you. For, uh, that's a 90 day site license trial. Fantastic. A another question through, um, a bit of a technical one. I found that if you have edited a document, the, sp the speech while type function stops working. Have you got a patch or a suggestion for this, Mary? Would have to be a support question, I'm afraid. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, but if you want to just, just email them in or, or phone them and they'll, uh, they'll have the answers. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. Great. And I think. We've just about, and Mark who's just asked that says thank you, so that, our pleasure Mark. Um, please do reach out to Mary's colleagues because they'll have the answers for technical issues. Beyond that Mary, we've, we've done great there, we've got through all the questions this evening which is fantastic. So that just leaves me to say a huge thank you to you. Do you know it makes such a difference to be able to see you as well whilst you're sharing this fantastic information with oh. us I think. So that's been so useful. Um, yeah, and we've got people, a lot of our listeners are saying thank you to you. So really, and um, obviously we at BDA, a huge thank you to Clara for doing this for us. We really appreciate and the, the code that you're sharing. So um, Mary, I will. I'll, I'll share the recording of this with all our listeners. If there's anything, um, what I think what we'll do as well is we'll also share these email addresses and the link to your website so they can go on and listen to your fantastic webinars. I know that that one about languages is one Christina is interested in, um, and the code, yes, I'll, of course. I'll, I'll that. I think I'll be doing that in October. Okay, uh, fantastic. Yeah, well. We'll keep in touch and hopefully we welcome you back at some point. So it just leaves me to say a huge thank you to you, Mary. And thank you very much. 
Fantastic. And like I say, it's made such a difference to be able to see you. It's been so, you've made it lovely and clear. Thank you. And a huge thank you as always to our listeners. We hope you enjoyed this evening. Please do keep in touch with us at BDA. And a huge thank you to Claro for all the support they always give to us. So have a great rest of the evening, thank everybody. And um, we'll join again for a future broadcast. Thank you so much. Good night.